You know, at least it was, it was that night. Did Ms. Hurd ever ask you for any other medical records? No. In the over six years that you've known Mr. Depp, have you ever witnessed him be physically abusive to any person? Never. And you've never witnessed him being physically abusive to Ms. Hurd, correct? Correct. You've also um, known Ms. Hurd for over six years at this point, correct? Yes, although I have not seen Ms. Hurd for at least a couple years, perhaps three years. <clears throat> in the six years that you treated Ms. or in the over six years you've treated Mr. Depp, has Mr. Depp ever complained to you that Ms. Hurd has physically abused him? No, not that I can recall. Have you ever witnessed Ms. Hurd be physically abusive to Mr. Depp? No. Has anyone who works for you or reports to you ever reported to you that they witnessed Ms. Depp, or excuse me, Ms. Hurd be physically abusive to Mr. Depp? No, not that I can recall. You testified, uh, we testified earlier a uh, few questions from Ms. Myers that the um, tip of Mr. Depp's finger was found in the kitchen, found on the floor of the kitchen in, in the home in, in Australia, correct? Right. Now where, do you know where the kitchen was? Was it on what floor the kitchen was? There was a downstairs below the kitchen area. I think those, I'm, I'm not, really sure i think those were bedrooms but i'm not positive so this would be on the main floor the kitchen was on the main floor as you went into the home and that's where the tip of the finger was found in the, in the kitchen on the main floor yes no there was a text message where, where you got a text message from mr Dad. Yes. yes and he said he, he said he cut his finger correct i think that's what it said yes okay and um the reference from the emergency room said that Mr. Depp had cut, sliced his finger with a knife, correct? Yes, that's what he told, because I was present for that. That's what he told the emergency room doctor. Okay, so Mr. Depp told the emergency room doctor that he had cut his finger with a knife, correct? Yes. Okay. And you didn't put that in any of your notes that a bottle was thrown at Mr. Depp, correct? Correct. Did Mr. Depp have any cuts anywhere else on his face or anywhere else that would have come from glass? Now, if um, if Ms. Hurd told Ms. Borum that Mr. Depp had hit her in the face several times and sent her pictures of bruises, would you expect Ms. Borum to report that in her notes? I would have expected Ms. Borum to send me those pictures. Okay. Um, so you would have expected to see those pictures from Ms. Borum, is that correct? Yes. And you would have expected, and you would have wanted Ms. Borum to, if she had been seen a text that said, I was hit in the face by Ms. Hurd and then received pictures of bruises, that Ms. Borum would report that to you, correct? Yes. Is that, any, is that an instruction that you gave to your nurses to, to report to you any abuse that they saw or were reported to them? Uh, yes, if they saw that as valid, um, Ms. Heard, for example, if somebody hurt Ms. Heard while she was under the care, uh, direct care of Ms. Borum, uh, and Ms. Borum documented that Ms. Heard had been injured, she certainly would have reported that to me. That's what, that was, that's what your expectation would be, that she can report. Yeah. Dr. Kipper, did you keep any notes um, of your treatment of Mr. Depp while he was in Australia? Other than the summary notes, um, no. And when, was Ms. Lloyd with you when Mr. Depp told you what had happened to his finger before you brought him to the hospital? 
I believe yes. Um, I'm not positive, but I believe yes, because she was helping me at the car uh, to try to clean out that finger, which is when he explained what happened. So you believe that that Miss Lloyd would have heard Mr. Depp's explanation? I, I believe so. All right, that completes the deposition. And, I, and the next witness is also by deposition, is that correct? That's correct, Your Honor, Debbie Lloyd. All right, well, why don't we go ahead and go ahead and take our morning break. It's a little early, but since the next witness is also by deposition, why don't we take our 15-minute break now so you can uh, stretch for a little bit, and we'll come back um, in about 15 minutes, okay? So you can go ahead. Do not talk to anybody. Don't do any outside research, right? Okay, thank you. 15 minutes. And with the court taking a break, we're going to take a break. We'll have more of Deb V. Heard in Fairfax, Virginia, after this. And now. Welcome back to Court TV Live. I'm Julia Janae. The real-life courtroom drama between actors Johnny Depp and Amber Heard is playing out right in front of our Court TV cameras. Court is on a short 15-minute break in the multi-million dollar defamation suit between the former couple. We'll take you back live into the Fairfax, Virginia courtroom when the judge is back on the bench. But still with me to talk about all that we've just seen, criminal defense attorney Aaron Nelson in Hudson, Wisconsin. Aaron, we heard Dr. Kipper there in that video deposition that was taken last year talking about two very different things it seems on direct when we had the attorneys of amber heard first asking him over the last two days they focused on his problems his addiction his uh, diagnosis uh, but we heard when depp's attorneys had the chance to question him they focused more on uh, what amber heard may have said about their relationship what do you make or what stood out to you from that testimony well, we know exactly why uh, Johnny Depp's attorneys have now called this doctorate impeachment by omission, as I'm sure you know. That is, they uh, got into the fact that this doctor who was treating Amber Heard never heard from Amber Heard about any allegations of violence, never heard from Amber Heard about any allegations of abuse, never observed any uh, circumstantial evidence that would support such allegations, uh, which would give the Johnny Depp's attorneys the basis to basically make the argument. He didn't see it, he didn't hear it, and he didn't hear it, and he didn't see it because it didn't happen. She was lying, now she's making it up. So this is a foundation for their case. And if any of our viewers are wondering perhaps why we had the attorney for Amber Heard asking those questions first, even though this is uh, something that Depp's attorneys have put into evidence in front of this jury, it was a deposition. It sounds like it was called for by Heard's attorneys at the time, but Depp's attorneys seeing that it's very important for them to use it in their case right now as they start uh, in this defamation lawsuit against each other, the dueling ones. I want to ask you about the celebrity factor of this. These jurors are hearing about detoxification on a private island, trips to Australia, a doctor who sounds like he's on call when there are issues. Do these attorneys have to take the extra step to explain this lifestyle to the jury for those who may not even be able to process some of this. You know, it's interesting. They haven't done that so far, at least not in what I have seen. You know, I think uh, there'd be some blowback if they perhaps did and perhaps where they uh, do that all is up in the closing. But I think at the heart of this and perhaps some of what we heard from the doctor here is, is Johnny Depp is as human as the rest of us. He suffers from these other problems um, whether they be mental illness or substance abuse or anything else. Certainly he has some privileges, but when it comes down to it, he's a human being just like all of the rest of us and uh, he should not be defamed. And so I think that they're playing it really tight and really simple because I think everybody just knows, hey, he's Johnny Depp. Of course he has a private island. Of course he has a private doctor. There's that difference in level of celebrity between these two parties that are sitting there in the courtroom. I did notice Amber Heard at one point when the doctor was testifying, it seemed like she turned to her attorney and mouthed that I love this, uh, as if it, this is something that she wanted the jury to hear about. Let's actually talk, though, about some portions that may not be very favorable to Heard's side uh, when the doctor was asked directly about what she may have reported to him while her then husband was under his care. Take a listen. 
You see this entry is dated August 27, 2014? Yes. Prior to the time that you treated Ms. Heard, did she ever seek treatment from you for injuries that appeared to be the result of domestic abuse? No, she did not. Did she ever seek treatment from you for any injuries that she told you were caused by Mr. Depp? No, she did not. Did Ms. Hearn ever tell you that Mr. Depp abused her? No, she did not. And you never witnessed any physical abuse by Mr. Depp against Ms. Hearn during the time you treated both of them? No, no never. If Ms. Bourne observed that Ms. Hurd had any physical injuries, is this something that would have been documented in her patient notes for Ms. Hurd? Yes, absolutely. In March 2015, you traveled down to Australia to attend to Mr. Depp, is that right? Yes. At the time, Mr. Depp was already in Australia, correct? Correct. And was Ms. Lloyd with him? Yes. And was misheard with him? Yes. Attorney Aaron Nelson, what does Team Heard have to do to defuse this type of rather damaging testimony once it's their turn? Yeah, I think their argument's going to be that just because somebody else didn't see it doesn't mean it didn't happen, that the the abuse that the herd is claiming happened happened in private. And that's a pretty typical uh, argument by the state in criminal cases is most of the time that there's not witnesses to these matters because these matters happen in a private situation between two private individuals. Of course, what uh, Johnny Depp is bringing forth here is they weren't alone that much. There was always, they had assistance, they had other people around. There were lots of opportunities for other people to make observations. So uh, what you see too at the end is that uh, this December report of a headache and her bumping her head as I'm sure going to be made uh, much ado about by both sides. That's an interesting point you make and it goes back to that perhaps celebrity status that this jury has to be educated on because a lot of times they don't have a lot of time where they're away from all of the staff that they constantly have around them. And in this case, they even had these doctors who are around them a lot of the time when he was going through different things. Let's talk about the finger. Uh, we learned a little bit more about it through this doctor's testimony. This is, of course, Johnny Depp's sliced finger that he went to the emergency room on, but there are dueling uh, discussions about how it happened, depending on which party is doing the speaking. Anything you learn from it through this testimony that you think moves the needle? No, I mean, I, uh, it'll be interesting how both sides tie this up because it can be confusing. I haven't necessarily followed the thread of how this helps either side. On the one hand, we have uh, Johnny Depp's inaccurate report to one person about how it happened and then a different report to another person about how it happened, which I think is consistent with lots of what Heard is going to say is, look, here's a situation where somebody might have a reason, Johnny Depp in particular, of not telling the truth about how a certain injury happened, whether it be a finger, whether it be a bump to a head, whether it be something else. So that can that can cut both ways, I guess, would be the, the phrase I would use there, perhaps inappropriately. But it's unclear to me how that helps Johnny Depp's case at all. Right, we know that Depp's team says that she threw a vodka bottle at him during a fight, and that's how this finger was severed in that way. She alleges that it was self-mutilation and that this was uh, just a downward spiral that he was in at the moment. Uh, so we likely will hear more. That's what we got out of opening statements. We expect that there's going to be a nurse on the stand, a nurse of Dr. Kipper's. Do you think if she takes the stand live and she's not in a video deposition that she could be more uh, impactful to this jury than he has been? Um, could be. You know, I got the impression that the nurse Lloyd was going to be coming up again on a deposition. I'm not sure if the other nurse Borum, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, if she perhaps does. But uh, it. I got the impression from Heard's counsel in the deposition that there's perhaps something, a piece that we're missing, that there's some photos out there, that there's something that the Dr. Kipper did, wasn't told about and he should have been told about. I can't imagine why Heard's attorneys were asking him about that unless they had those photos in hand. So it'll be interesting to hear what the nurses have to say, whether it corroborates Dr. Kipper's testimony or whether there's some holes in it.
Aaron Nelson, thanks so much for your insight. We are going to squeeze in a break, and once we come back, we should be getting back into live testimony in depth be heard in Fairfax, Virginia. Thanks for watching Court TV Live. Shopguilt.com today. I'm Tanley Painter in Fairfax, Virginia for the Johnny Depp defamation case, and this is Court TV, your front row seat to justice. Back to Core TV Live. I'm Julia Janae. The second week of testimony is underway in the Johnny Depp versus Amber Heard defamation civil trial. Depp is suing his ex-wife for $50 million following an op-ed she wrote back in 2018. And Heard is pursuing a $100 million defamation countersuit. The jury just finished up listening to the video deposition from Depp's private doctor. Up next, we expect to hear testimony from a nurse who treated Depp. I'm going to get you back into court when they get back underway. I'm actually watching and I think we can get in to court now. I see the judge on the bench. Let's listen. I'm sorry. It is 1067. That's correct. And and we have no objection to the document coming in. It's okay. just we have a disagreement about the redaction. All right. If you want to come forward, then maybe we'll take a look at the you said 1067, correct? Correct. Your Honor. Okay. All right, let's bring back in guest criminal defense attorney Aaron Nelson in Hudson, Wisconsin. Uh, Aaron, we don't know who's coming up next, but it sounds like it may be the nurse or another video deposition. But some of the ones that we are anticipating taking the stand, some of the more high profile names include a friend of Johnny Depp's, Paul Bettany, uh, someone who has talked about uh, this actor being one of the best people he knows, the sweetest person he knows, uh, someone that these jurors may recognize from uh, his uh, character roles in the Avengers uh, uh, series. I'm wondering if you think having friends on the stand versus these doctors, if that impacts these jurors in the way that a professional would. Well, you certainly I mean the people that are going to be around you are going to be your friends. You know, if somebody was ever going to ask questions about how I behave, I'm sure they'd call my family and friends. My family and friends aren't famous. Uh, and so the family and friends of famous people are more likely to be also famous. And you wonder if that just gives them a leg up on credibility. If somebody knows somebody and already likes them, I think they're more likely to believe them. So in many ways, uh, I see the benefit for Johnny Depp calling his friends uh, in this case in particular, because it just gives them a leg up on credibility. Aaron, I don't know if I've asked you this yet. I asked some of our earlier guests about Johnny Depp's appearance there at the defense table. Strikingly different from the way Amber Heard is conducting herself inside of that courtroom. It seems like as soon as they go off the record, he is laughing with his attorney in a constant stream of whatever they are talking about compared to a very serious looking Amber Heard across the aisle. Yeah, he's very engaged. Um, you saw at one point during the video deposition, the doctor used the word gestalt, and uh, Johnny Depp almost kind of smirked and leaned over to his attorney and said, you know, I like that word, or there was some sort of uh, exchange there. He certainly seems relaxed. He seems confident. You know, the the I don't get a chance to see uh, Ms. Hurd's reactions as much as uh, Johnny Depp, because that's where the cameras are focused. Uh, but he seems to be, again, I think engaged, which I think is helpful. There's that fine line between somebody pulling on that attorney's shirt sleeves too much to uh, appear to be controlling or to be something else. But I don't get that impression from Mr. Depp. That's true. Very relaxed is what it seems. I'm wondering, though, if you're his attorney, do you tell him to dial that down when the jury's in the courtroom? Do you run the risk of making it seem like you're making light of the situation? Or is it a good for them to see you in your natural habitat? You know, I would, uh, you know, it's hard to not micromanage that, but I think he's doing just fine. And it sounds like the judge, or looks like the judge rather, is going back on the record, probably about to bring in the jury, but let's listen. And actually swinging back to another sidebar, looks like it may be a quick one. What are you going to be paying attention to, to the nurse? I know you said you're going to listen to whether or not she corroborates the uh, doctor that she worked for, but anything about her position as a nurse versus this doctor who was over the treatment that may be significant. You know, I think it's important perhaps, uh, again, if you put in the gender dynamics, perhaps a female is more likely to disclose abuse to another female. And so I think the fact that uh, these nurses uh, 
uh, were there and had contact with Amber Heard and they created an environment that would have been comfortable for Amber Heard to make these disclosures or say something else. And if she doesn't say it there, uh, I think that again, that supports Johnny Depp's argument here that they didn't see it, she didn't say it because none of it happened. So that's, it's again, a more of the um, impeachment by omission type of evidence. All right. I wondered that as well when they were asking Dr. Kipper, Johnny Depp's attorney rather, was asking Dr. Kipper as to if his nurses had known or something had been reported to them, would they have had to then report it up the chain to him? And he said that's absolutely what would have happened and it would have been part of their job and their training. So I don't know if they'll come in and say something different, say that yes, they observed this or yes, they uh, were told this and just didn't send it up the chain. How reliable might it be if they didn't? And then do what they were required to do with that information. Yeah, and then it's interesting because we know that the counselor has already um, testified and the counselor said that there was mutual abuse. And so it's the trying to, to set up, perhaps there's a different setting. In some setting, somebody has a motive to lie or in some setting, somebody has a motive to tell the truth. And I think that's what it's gonna come down to when you talk about the contrasting evidence between the counselor um, who saw them both as opposed to the doctor and the, and the nurses who are there to provide medical uh, care for both people. You're talking about that psychologist who actually counseled both of them who was already on the stand. We expect there are going to be some other witnesses who are similar to that. It seems like musical chairs there inside of the courtroom, different people coming up to get an audience with the judge. They are still right now off the record, but we can of course see that live look inside of the gallery, a packed house. This is the courtroom, but there's also a gallery overflow room where we know there are many, many, many fans. A majority of Johnny Depp's, he is just looking at the crowds and what reports we've gotten from our field team there on the ground, uh, that he's the one that is getting the majority of the support there. Does that play out at all in this courtroom? Does it help or hurt if these jurors know more about Depp than they know about her, do you think, Aaron? Well, again, it's um, he's the more popular one, so it's more likely that one of those seven people that is uh, on the jury, or if there's one of the alternates from the 11, that they're going to have some unconscious bias or some preference for Johnny Depp just because they know him and that he's uh, more popular. So definitely, I think that what we see outside of the courtroom is going to be also reflected inside of the jury deliberations. It's the same it's the same common uh, people that are going to be making these decisions. So in that sense, I think it uh, bodes well for Mr. Depp that he's the most popular. Obviously, it's not just a popularity contest, and he has to be careful that there's not a juror who is silently sitting there and perhaps is against uh, Mr. Depp for some sort of popularity that he has. And so it's a fine balance that they're going to have to play. All right, that popularity can cut both ways because it may mean that you know the negative things that have been in the media about that person. We know our field team, they're on the ground. They have sources that say that Johnny Depp is expected or likely to take the stand in his own defense this week. What does he have to do when he is testifying? He has to be authentic. He has to be believable. I mean, obviously there's things that he needs to say, but I think we all know what we uh, expect him to say. I never abused Amber Heard. I've never hit her. I've never hurt her in any way. But I think it's the manner in which that comes across, which we all have to wonder like, hey, how does a professional actor project believability in a real life situation? And how do we not just always go, huh, I wonder if that guy's acting still? And so um, I think that's what he needs to project is just this vibe, this feeling um, that he is, in the end of the day, believable. Does he have to take ownership of anything? It gets hard when sometimes you hear someone take the stand and deny absolutely everything when it seems that some things must be true for many people to take the stand and say them. Or does he avoid the problematic parts? That's a fascinating strategic decision that we're going to see play out hopefully later this week because you you nailed it. That's exactly right. I don't, in you know, 
uh, especially in a marriage. Uh, you know, there's lots of things that are going on. There's lots of responsibility uh, that both parties play anytime that there's some sort of uh, volatility or verbal argument. And so we'll see how much his counseling has allowed him to take any of that ownership because I would be hesitant to believe somebody that just said that they were completely perfect in their marriage and uh, when it fell apart. And we know that there was a, sort of an issue in the gallery that happened at the end of last week. There was a friend of the team heard, uh, Eve Barlow, a journalist who was inside of the gallery. And the, the judge actually had to write an order barring her from the gallery because she was reportedly passing notes to Amber Heard's team. She was tweeting and on her phone, something that was banned inside of this courtroom. Uh, she no longer can come in. This is after Johnny Depp's team filed a motion to try and get her bounced, and he was successful in doing that. So just another piece of what's going on inside of that courtroom now that we are in week two. Looks like the judge is back on the record finally. Let's listen in. The jury. Okay, I'll just make sure. That's right, thank you. And we wait just a little bit longer for this jury to come in, a much smaller jury than we see in the criminal trials, because you only need in Virginia five to seven jurors for a civil trial. Uh, they, of course, are going to be deciding not only the suit of Depp versus Heard, but also Heard's countersuit against the plaintiff in this case, Johnny Depp, her ex-husband. Uh, we don't know when these deliberations will